Internet, you know what's hard when you're making a movie? Including a large cast of characters and making them all still feel important and well-written and like real people and interesting. Most movies that try to do this fail, but fortunately 2016 has proven to be the year when one movie, and a superhero movie at that, proves that it is possible to have an ensemble movie with a huge cast of ridiculous characters that is actually good, and that movie is Captain America Civil War, and that came out in April. DC's Suicide Squad, on the other hand, which premieres tonight in the Theaters is total rubbish. I'm Johnny B and welcome back to a long overdue episode of Critical Hit. <laughs> Alrighty, so let's get started. We are going to jump straight into the crits because there's not really any hits to mention. First off, this movie suffers from the exact same issue that plagued Batman vs Superman, which is a large number of pretty much disconnected plot points happening bum 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 and not working to tell any kind of overarching story. The way I have described this to all of my friends so far is that it seems like in the brainstorming phase they put all of their random ideas on the whiteboard and then forgot to actually erase the whiteboard before they made the movie. It's just all in there whether it needs to be in there or makes any sense to be in there. And unlike Batman vs Superman which came together at the end and did actually mostly make sense once you knew all of the little pieces, Suicide Squad just stays random the whole time. Which leads to crit number two, some severe pacing issues. I kid you not, this movie opens with 20 straight minutes of exposition introducing you to all of the characters, which I will say is genuinely entertaining but is an odd way to start the movie. But then it just like leaps forward and a whole a bunch of stuff happens really quickly with almost zero explanation. Turns out you find out later in the movie actually three days pass, although you never see that happen at all. And then it slows way down for like some really protracted battle scenes and then it jumps forward again. Basically the whole movie just does this like slinky thing of time and amount of events happening and it makes it terribly difficult to watch. And crit number three, most of the characters are just pointless or obnoxious, which on a movie that is supposed to thrive on its interesting and entertaining characters is a total death knell. In fact, I have such a problem with most of the characters in this film that I thought it would be helpful to complete this nifty little chart for you. Down here we have our completely pointless characters, those being Killer Croc, who no joke says I think two lines the entire movie, Katana, who literally shows up out of nowhere in one scene and then is supposed to be like an integral part of the team, Slipknot, who also shows up out of nowhere though at a different time and isn't even treated as an important member of the team unlike Katana, and sadly enough the Joker, who, while decent enough of a character and entertaining, pretty much feels like a ripoff of Heath Ledger, despite them constantly advertising that this is a different different Joker, and he doesn't contribute anything to the plot aside from giving backstory to Harley Quinn, who is number one of my obnoxious characters. A lot of people will disagree with this, and yes, there are times where she is genuinely entertaining, but her character changes so much constantly, and not like in an insane way, but in an inconsistent acting way, that it's just hard to get a feel for what she's supposed to be. Two obnoxious character, Rick Flagg, also known as Soldier McSoldierson, who could not be more American cliche if he carried around an American American flag colored cigar. Third obnoxious character, Captain Boomerang, also known as what everyone who's never been to Australia assumes Australians are like, which by the way is I think what they call racism. Just because he's white doesn't make it not racism automatically. And fourth obnoxious character, Enchantress, because everything she does is accompanied by this weird little like swaying dance thing and absolutely terrible CG effects. So it's literally hard to watch. The only decent slash tolerable slash whatever you want to call it characters who also count as the one hit that I could really honestly give this movie are Deadshot and who surprised because it's Will Smith and they actually made him A sympathetic and B true to his comic character which is being an absolute total jerk to everybody. Surprisingly he did a pretty good job acting that out despite the fact that it's hard to see Will Smith as a bad guy. Two, El Diablo though he is critically underused in the movie that's just a testament to how well crafted his character actually was and how the character did a good job with a not too greatly written part. Plus, he's just cool and marks the rare example of a character that I knew nothing about who I'm actually really interested in as opposed to all the other characters in this movie. And final decent character, June Moon. Actually, possibly my favorite character in the film. This is actually just the human alter ego of the Enchantress. The beginning of the movie starts out with this really interesting interplay between June Moon and Enchantress and like the combat going on in her head and inside her body. And I really would have loved them to explore that more, but they just threw it out the window and ignored it after the first 40 minutes of the movie. Not really sure 
sure why. And those are just some of my complaints. I won't even mention the fact that most of the dialogue is either pointless or cheesy. Characters' motivations flip-flop constantly. There's terrible CG everywhere, not just with the Enchantress. There's no real in-movie explanation for why the team is ever authorized in the first place. I saw it in 3D and the 3D conversion was terribly done, which please so help me stop converting movies into 3D. If you want it to be 3D, make it that way in the first place with two cameras. Otherwise, it just doesn't need to happen. The movie commits so much to spectacle that it actually interferes with the logical telling of the story at times, and the list goes on and on and on. If you can't tell, I didn't really enjoy this movie at all. But before we go, of course, it is tradition to mention some other bits that might be interesting. First of all, I think this movie proves conclusively that DC has hired a really great team at making trailers. However, they need to fire that team and hire people who know how to make movies instead. And this fact makes me very worried about both Justice League and Wonder Woman because I thought the Comic-Con trailers for those were great. Second, it's very strange to hear 21 Pilots, aka the voice of Tyler Joseph, coming out of a movie screen because I went to high school with that dude, and it's pretty awesome that they are where they are. Three, this is verging into very, very mild spoiler territory, but I actually really like liked the way the post credit scene connected this movie into the Justice League. Let's just hope that that movie doesn't suck when it takes advantage of this connection. And finally, my favorite other bit, in the credits of this movie is listed a hairstylist to Mr. Smith. Assuming that that refers to Will Smith, aka the actor who plays the character Deadshot, he's bald in this movie. So why did he have a hairstylist? Anyway, there you go. Those are my thoughts on Suicide Squad. In short, it's bad. Taking all things together, I'd say this movie deserves about one and a half stars. And honestly, I think that's being generous. This isn't even one of those movies that's bad, but you enjoy it regardless. It's just bad and you don't enjoy it. See it if you want to. There are certainly entertaining moments, but oh my land, it's bad. So that's that. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss my next episode. I'm gonna review the new Pete's Dragon, which is coming out next week. Also follow me on Twitter because I post all kinds of humor slash random thoughts slash I don't know, maybe even announcements about new videos. And I will see you next next week on Critical Hit.